This is Twit. It was June of 2014, so five years ago. Yes. That we got the first whiff of a problem with DRAM memory not being as stable as we all hoped and assumed it was. Uh, and, you know, there there have been the stories about spraying it with Freon and like, which was surprising to us at the time and relocating it to a different machine. I was like, wait, you mean the bits hold on to their, their charge that long? It's like, yeah. Uh-huh. Anyway, um, since then, five years ago, this subtle flaw has been developed into a growing family of attacks, which we've gleefully covered <laughs> over the years. Rowhammer. Glitch, Rampage, Throw Hammer, Net Hammer, uh, more recently D Rammer. Oh, yeah. um, now, to those we add Ram Bleed, which is different, um, uh, and we should probably call that prolific team at the University of Michigan and the Graz University of Technology the Ram Busters. <laughs> um, we have a, a website, rambleed.com, and a logo because, you know, a, a good exploit needs a good logo. So we got that. Um, the official title is Rambleed Reading Bits in Memory Without Accessing Them. Um, and I'll just read their little description. They said, Rambleed is a side channel attack that enables an attacker to read out physical memory belonging to other processes. Whoops, that's not good. The implications of violating arbitrary privilege boundaries are numerous Uh and vary in severity based on the other software running on the target machine. As an example, in our paper, get this, we demonstrate an attack against OpenSSH, in which we use RAM bleed to leak a 2048-bit RSA key. However, RAM bleed can be used for reading other data as well. RAM bleed is based on a previous side channel called Rowhammer, which of course we've talked about extensively, which enables an attacker to flip bits in the memory space of other processes. We show in our paper that an attacker, by observing Rowhammer-induced bit flips in their own memory, can deduce the values in nearby DRAM rows. Thus, RAM bleed shifts Rowhammer from being a threat not only to integrity, but to confidentiality as well. Furthermore, unlike Rowhammer, Rambly does not require persistent bit flips, and it is thus effective against ECC memory commonly used by server computers. And of course, it was ECC that was that was stated as the as the cure for the Rowhammer problem, because if you flipped a bit, it the ECC would flip it back. Okay, so um, what did all that mean? Um, as we've talked about with Rowhammer, remember that that the idea was if you pounded on DRAM, uh, reading DRAM is a destructive process. Remember that. So so DRAM itself is a is a row of little itty bitty capacitors which store electrostatic charge, and there if they're charged up they they contain a 1 if they're if they're discharged they contain a 0 so the act of reading a row of memory oh and I, and I should also mention that a dram is a big grid a big you know rectangular grid of rows and columns of these little cells the act of reading a row transfers the charge out of the row into sense amplifiers on the edge and thus the row needs to be rewritten so reading forces a write and what was discovered is that the unfortunately in the push to increase density the capacitors have been made ever smaller and the engineers have said okay uh there's enough margin 
error margin, tolerance, noise margin, that this is reliable enough. Now, if you want more reliability, because you can get an occasional misread, then you add ECC memory. The, the idea is there's an extra bunch of bits tacked onto the end of each row to, to detect and correct a bit if it's read back incorrectly. The point is that, you know, isn't the DRAM is not perfect. And again, they've unfortunately they keep making this the the storage cells tinier in order to cram more of them onto a smaller chip in order to keep the cost down and to raise the density. And we end up with a with a situation where it turns out that if you make a big ruckus in the neighborhood, then you can cause a, a misreading, a deliberate misreading in bits nearby, that is the adjacent row bits. And then what was discovered, you could make, you could even get more bits to flip or bits to flip more reliably with what was known as double row hammer or DRAMer where you would be pounding on both rows on either side of your target row so to kind of get it from both sides and even even induce more bit flips and for example we talked about one instance where this was so clever where in a in a ver VM environment the private key which was in use by a server remember that a private key is deliberately the product of two primes, the point being you can't factor it in order to break it apart again. Well, these guys flipped a bit in the, in the private key on an adjacent virtual machine that they were sharing, which may, meant that its private key was no longer the product of two primes. It was the product of of other things that was easy to factor. And so they factored it and were then was able to, they were able to spoof their, their connection essentially. So just super clever. Okay. What these guys have done. Okay. So, so that was row hammer pounding on adjacent rows on either side of a target to make a bit flip. Well, the observation had been made then but it wasn't until now that it was weaponized that the that the probability of being able to get a bit flip depended upon depended weakly but significantly upon the the, the bit states of adjacent rows in other words if you had, if you could arrange to put, to cause a secret to, to occupy the physical row above and the physical row below your own memory, then you could use row hammer on your own memory and based on the probability that is the success rate of flipping bits in your own memory, you could infer the, the invisible contents of the rows above and below, which is just amazing. They said specifically one bits tend to flip from one to zero when the bits above and below them are zero, but not when the bits above and below them are one. Similarly, zero bits tend to flip from zero to one when the bits above and below them are one, but not when the bits above and below them are zero. In other words, there ten, the, the, there's a tendency for the adjacent bits to pull the bit in the middle to their same state if you give them the chance. And these guys weaponized this they, they nailed it to the ground and they are able to extract a, pri a, a 248 bit secret key from an adjacent 
process that they have no access, no read access to, they can exfiltrate that key over time. And it turns out that if if they if there's ECC memory that that is that they're trying to do this in in the presence of ECC memory, ECC when it detects that a bit flip has occurred introduces such a dramatic slowdown in performance that that can be detected. So they're able to infer that a bit flip occurred even if they can't see it because when they attempt to read it to detect a bit flip, ECC will get there first. It'll see, whoops, we had a problem here and it'll fix it. But that delays the result of the read so much that even though the, the, the data comes back apparently not having been flipped, they go, aha, that took too long. ECC corrected the bit flip that we, in, that we induced. So even ECC won't fix this problem. So there really is no solution to this. Um, users can, the, they wrote, users can mitigate their risk by upgrading their memory to DDR4 because we know that four is better than, you know, more noise immune than three, with also the feature known as targeted row refresh. That the, the, the idea is that, as we know, DRAM, because of these, these, these are little capacitors storing data in, in storing our data in the charge of a capacitor, it tends to tends to bleed over time. Again, they've made them so small that, you know, they're like counting electrons now. Um, so it's necessary to periodically re read through all of DRAM to, to read every row out before it, it's chart, the, the chart, the one charges have a chance to get so low that you really can't distinguish them from zero. So, so the idea is that the the rate at which you refresh affects the the integrity of your DRAM. One of the early mitigations for Rowhammer was increased refresh rate. That would improve the noise margins of the of of DRAM in order to to um, minimize the the chance of Rowhammer attacks. The alternative is this. TRR, which is a new feature, targeted row refresh. The idea being that the memory system looks at the at the memory access pattern and will will over refresh the areas that might be subject to either inadvertent or deliberate bit flips by 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 selectively preferentially refreshing those rows. Um, more than others. So anyway, so, you know, fundamentally, um, there, there is no good solution here. Um, just as we have learned that our high performance CPU architectures are flawed at the fundamental level by being altered by their own execution history, thus Spectre and Meltdown all of last year, we have seen the DRAM is similarly flawed at a fundamental level. That is, I mean, the, these are not fixable problems. These are fundamental flaws in the systems that we've been using. And we're, we're now, what we've seen for the last, well, really for the last five years, if you consider Rowhammer, but also certainly all of the last year with all of the microarchitectural flaws is that, that, that academic researchers are really looking at things that we've taken for granted closely and successfully poking big holes in what we thought we were able to trust. So, so, um, I don't know. It, it's, there's the, in, in their Q and a that they have, they've, they've mentioned that they are highly suspicious or skeptical that anyone would have already succeeded in weaponizing this and using this, but here is a problem that ups the ante. I mean, it, it would take, it took a lot of massaging of memory management in order to, in order to cause the physical alignment of the secrets they want to exfiltrate with the 
memory that they have control over. But this is arguably a more powerful attack that is this ram bleed than all of the previous row hammer esque attacks because given that you are you have time to and the ability to massage memory allocation which is what's necessary in order to to create physical ram proximity um, then you are able they said 3 to 4 bits per second is their exfiltration bit rate once they have everything set up so um, it it really does mean that servers need to be looking seriously at using DRAM4, uh, 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 D- DDR4 DRAM with targeted row refresh, maybe sacrifice some performance by increasing refresh rate if possible. And, and really stepping back, you know, this doesn't affect ant- typical end users. Again, in the same way that Spectra and Meltdown don't, because the the real problem is only when you've got reason to believe that something malicious is sharing your hardware with you. As we've often said, if you've got something malicious on your desktop sharing your desktop hardware, well, you're already in much bigger trouble. The real problem is in the cloud. And... Um, I, I, and, and the good news, I guess, is that's where they're able to spend some money in order to to implement stronger hardware mitigations against this. But, it's, you know, even though this is not good news, it's better to know that we have this problem. I mean, that's why targeted row refresh exists now in DDR4 is thanks to the early work five years ago um, that that, you know, this is that DRAM can be exploited successfully um, with row hammer style attacks. So we got improved DRAM. Similarly, we're getting improved microcode now and improved micro architectures in the future in order to further mitigate uh, micro architectural information leakage. So onward. 